Hello there. This is John Gruber. I'm here with my bird, Jomo, to talk about the seventh edition of my textbook. For those of you who've used my textbook in the past, thank you so much for letting me help you teach your students about public finance. And for new users, I hope you'll check out the newly revised seventh edition. The structure of the textbook remains the same. The book is divided into four sections, introduction and background preparation in both micro and macro, externalities and public goods, social insurance, including healthcare, and taxation. And throughout the book, I endeavor to make sure that students approach these topics in three ways. The first is theoretical, primarily graphical, but with math where appropriate and with mathematical appendices where necessary. The second is empirical, with my innovative empirical applications throughout the book that discuss how research is carried out and explain the results. And the third is through policy examples and detailed policy applications, which provide the important details on how policy does and doesn't get made and what those impacts are. As we know, public finance is an incredibly exciting topic and always timely. As such, I've put a lot of work into revising my textbook I'm very proud of the newly revised 7th edition. Most notably, this revision was written when we were all in the throes of the COVID-19 crisis, perhaps the single most significant event for both public health and public policy in decades. The long reach of this pandemic we felt in many ways in public finance for many years. And I've reflected this in the revision a number of ways. For example, the introduction to the book highlights the array of decisions that the government had to make in the wake of COVID and the controversies they engendered. Chapter four discusses the role of debt in the wake of COVID-19 and includes a richer discussion of the new secular stagnation view of public debt burden. Chapter five introduces a new example of positive production externalities, research and development, with a corresponding new empirical application, as well as a new application on vaccine development under Operation Warp Speed. Chapter 10 starts with a new introduction focused on the fiscal stress placed on states and localities by COVID-19. Chapter 14 has a new introduction about the role of unemployment insurance during the COVID-19 crisis and includes a new application on modernizing the UI system in the wake of COVID-19. But as hard as it is to believe, there were other important developments in recent years above and beyond COVID-19, and the textbook reflects those as well. For example, chapter nine is a new introduction on the political expediencies and political positioning on energy policy, as well as the significantly updated discussion of the growing political polarization in the US. Chapter 16 features a number of updates to the discussion of the Affordable Care Act and the future of the US healthcare system. Chapter 17 is an updated discussion of universal basic income in the context of the robust discussion that took place during the 2020 election. Chapter 19 is a new introduction about corporate tax incidents in the context of the 2017 corporate tax cuts. Chapter 23 is a new introduction focused on early evidence on the opportunity zones introduced by the 2017 tax reform, as well as a revised discussion on efforts to tax wealth. And chapter 25 includes an updated discussion of IRS efforts to combat tax evasion. I hope that you will check out this new revised seventh edition and that you find it a useful classroom resource. And if you use this book, always feel free to reach out to me personally at gruberj at mit.edu with any questions or comments, because I'm already thinking about how to make the 8th edition even better. Jomo and I say thanks for using the textbook and thanks for checking it out. Bye.